Okay, hello, this is Dr. Jaynes, and today I'm going to talk about reverse engineering UFO propulsion systems, and this is part four in the series. And today we're going to talk about uh, low frequency pulse magnetic fields. Now, I believe that these fields are a critical part of the UFO propulsion system, and we'll talk about a little few eyewitness reports and some other uh, research that people have done and then relate it back to my first video. So here is a book, uh, The Evidence of U uh, UFO Evidence, a 30-year report by Richard H. Hall. And uh, there's a report in here where they talk about an airplane and it's flying and uh, the compass starts to rotate due to the pulse magnetic fields of UFO. I have to be clear about this. If the UFOs produce DC magnetic fields, that would just cause the compass to change direction. It would not rotate. You need a pulse field to do that, and it has to be pulsed at a fairly low frequency. So the object uh, regrouped and formed a vertical line when they moved randomly, uh, apparently coming closer when the objects moved. To the uh, left of the craft, his magnetic compass started spinning and my ADF automatic direction finder started spinning. At that point, they were in a straight line formation and they just blinked out. Okay. And uh, so the UFOs have, seem to have pulse magnetic fields that cause compasses to rotate. And we'll, we'll take a look at some, uh, uh, do a couple of ex uh, experiments because I love doing experiments. I'm an experimentalist and experiment is real. You know, theory is just uh, there to uh, help you describe experiment, but experiment is the real world. And so don't get caught up too much in theory. I, I, I like to look at many different theories because uh, theories are just tools to help you discover the truth and uh, find understanding. And here's another paper that uh, looks like it came out of Russia, evidence of very strong low frequency magnetic fields by A. Neeson, Institute of Physics, uh, Catholic University of Louisville. Okay. And uh, so in this paper, they actually do uh, some research on, on what frequencies you would have to do to uh, create a compass oscillating. And uh, they claim that there's uh, very low frequencies happening here, and uh, I believe about 30 hertz is the most that, well, in my experiment at least, we're going to say that 30 hertz or less is uh, the frequencies that you need to cause a magnetic field to, uh, or to a pulse magnetic field to cause a compass to rotate. It cannot be higher than about that, and it's probably even lower frequency than that. And uh, they talk about a UFO landing and it creates these burn marks on the ground. And they're claiming that's due to induction fields and pulse magnetic fields. We'll take a look at some experiments that, that uh, look at that. And uh, here we have some... Uh, they also talk about pilots with the rotating compasses in this. And... Uh, magnetometer readings from the ground. So here's one where they uh, see a light pulsing from a UFO at 4 hertz, another pulsating at 30 hertz, and they believe that this light uh, and magnetometer readings. Here's some graphs of magnetometer readings. This particular one is pulsing at 6 hertz. And again, uh, they see motion in uh, compasses that are nearby that, that cause it to either fluctuate back and forth or rotate. So this this one has a this is a, from a ground measurement of a magnetometer. A magnetometer is a device. Uh, okay, so this is a White Sands Proving Ground in New Mexico magnetometer and gravity. Gravity meter, gravity meter, accelerometers are reporting these, and uh, 
So these are recorded on ground magnetometers. And uh, the Fourier transform shows a regular pulsing at 6 hertz. So this is very interesting because uh, if we uh, go back to the first video that I made where we see a UFO anti-gravitational field pulsing with red and blue shifts, I uh, hypothesize that the upper limit of that had to be anywhere from 30 hertz because that's the camera frame rate. We see it pulsing fairly rapidly up to maximum of 300 hertz, but I said it has to be less than that because if it's much more than 30 hertz, like an order uh, factor of 10 or so, then it would just wash out completely. So it's got to be less than uh, this, this type of range. And so that's also consistent with the pulsating lights that we see, the pulsating gravitational field, the uh, needles on the compass spinning, and the ground uh, station's magnetometer measurements. So these UFOs seem to produce a intense pulse magnetic field at low frequencies. We're going to say probably less than 30 hertz. And somewhere between 3 and 30 hertz, let's say. We'll give an order of magnitude there. Very intense magnetic fields. And they seem to be associated with the generation of the anti-gravitational field, the pulsating anti-gravitational field generated under the ship, as we saw in the first video. And this is very interesting. And we'll, we'll look at some experiments that, that uh, I carry out to, to verify this. Okay, here's a neat little experiment where I took uh, one of these uh, flashing things you used to be able to get at Radio Shack. It has a, a variable, has a strobe light, has a variable rate generator, and I used the tube as like a switch, a flash tube, and I ran wires out so I could, out the back of it, see, so I could power this electromagnet or other things. I have little clip leads here. And what we're going to do is we're going to pulse these fields near a compass and see what happens. <coughs> okay. So here we go. This thing is down. And we'll zoom in. Okay. So we have our electromagnets pulsing near this compass. Let's see what happens. Okay, so I'm just going to start out with a low rep rate, and okay, so we're just pulsing about one hertz, and as you can see, it's causing the compass needle to spin. Let's uh, let's increase the rate a little bit. Okay, here's a few hertz maybe. <coughs> okay, let's let's look at the strobe. You can see how fast the strobe is flashing. Well, maybe it's hard to see in the camera, but definitely. Okay. The strobe is flashing in there. Just a few hertz. And uh, our, our compass is spinning pretty wildly. So what happens if we turn up the rate? I can tell you. Okay. So now we got it flashing probably like 10 hertz. <coughs> and what's happening with the compass, the compass is not even really, it's not even really spinning anymore. I mean, it's, it's just kind of being agitated. Take a look at how fast we're pulsing here. See? That's probably about 10 hertz. And so, <coughs> I guess it's kind of spinning. Oh no, it's spinning really fast. <coughs> so I guess if it gets going, it will spin really, really fast. That's interesting, huh? Or it will stop. Let's zoom in a little bit on this guy. But 10 hertz is getting kind of fast to, for this thing to just kind of be erratic. So what happens if we turn up the rate even more? Well, I guess it's not going to pulse much faster. But I can tell you, <coughs> I'm not sure if I want to do this experiment, but um, if you, uh, for instance, hooked up a coil to 
60 hertz, this uh, compass would not respond to it at all, and it would just uh, basically demagnetize it. That's what a de degausser is. And so definitely, if the fields are pulsing too fast, the compass needle would not be able to respond to it. So this puts an upper limit, I would say, at least at 60 hertz. Right? Get a better view. There we go. Anyway, so it's agitating back and forth. So if UFO propulsion systems use pulse magnetic fields, which they must, if they're making compasses go crazy, then um, <coughs> they must be a very low rep rate. Less than, a, I would say, probably about 30 hertz or so. Definitely less than 60 hertz. Anyway, so let's shut this guy down. Here's another neat little experiment. We have a variac hooked up to the same magnet, the electromagnet that we had before, and our compass. And we'll set it about, let's say, 50 volts. Okay. And then we'll flip the switch on. And what's going to happen? Is the magnet going to, is the compass going to spin? No. See, the compass can't respond that quickly to the 60 hertz. And in fact, if I leave it on, it will actually demagnetize the compass, which is not really what I want to do. So, let's try that again. The compass is not here. It's pointing off the side, we turn it on, and it aligns right toward the magnet. The 60 hertz sine wave is too fast for it to respond to, so it does not uh, cause it to spin. So 60 hertz is much too fast to make the compass spin. So the fields that we're looking at have to be much less than 60 hertz. Okay, here's a third experiment, and I don't recommend anyone doing this, and the last couple times I tried it, it didn't work out so well. This experiment that uh, some head honcho at Lockheed Martin was kind of showing off, and it's a well-known phenomenon, and uh, they were talking about this in the paper a little bit, where they uh, said the Earth was scorched under where a UFO landed, and they hypothesize it was a coil. Here we have a coil here. And uh, we have it hooked up to a power strip with a switch and I'm running 110 AC directly into the coil. And I tried a little while ago and it burned up the wires a little bit. But I just want to kind of show the point here. So we'll try just to see what, what, what I, the point I wanted to make was, and I have a piece of paper in between this and the copper sheet, so it doesn't uh, hopefully arc to the copper. And uh, we will see if we can make this thing levitate. Now, of course, real UFOs would not be using this principle because the ground is not anywhere near conductive enough, and uh, it would. Uh, not, basically, you have to produce any currents due to the AC field in the coil that uh, oppose the uh, currents. The, the currents are generated in the copper, since the copper is a very, this is a copper sheep here, since that's a very good conductor, uh, it will produce a repulsive field. So this is not how UFOs work, because there would not be enough eddy currents generated in the ground. You could maybe scorch the ground, but uh, that's a different story. So let's try starting her up and see what happens. Oh, anyway. Uh, I'm not sure if it lifted off. It should have. Because it got a lot of current through it. I'm going to try it one more time. These wires are kind of fusing. So. Oh. Oof. Anyway. experiment's not quite working the way I wanted it to. I didn't want to burn out my variac, so I didn't want to uh, hook a variac up to it because I burnt my variacs out before. 
that is no fun when that happens. So we'll try it one more time. Let's see if we. No, I guess we're not getting any levitation off of it. So. Ooh, turn the power off. So anyway, the idea is, is that you produce uh, high current in this, and it will. <coughs> You know, maybe I'll hook it up to the Variac. Let's try that. Okay, so now I have rewound the coil. And, uh, yeah, it's still this dangerous setup with clip leads plugged right into the wall. I have a little switch here to flip her on when we're ready. And I put some thicker copper actually under there because the, uh, the fields might be penetrating through this thin copper too, so that could be an issue. And so, let's uh... lower our camera a little bit. And see if we can get the effect that we want to see. Okay. Yeah, so, three, two, one. Oh. So putting the thicker copper under there made a difference. That's interesting. the uh, copper on this other sheet was too thin and the fields were penetrating through it. So, anyway, that's what uh, the difference in conductivity will make. And uh, we'll try it one more time. Oops. Maybe it helps if I plug it in. I unplugged it. Remember, I do not recommend anyone doing this. This is a very dangerous thing. 110 volts will kill you. Oops. Okay, and uh, so this is what they're suggesting would scorch the ground. And uh, so there's our experiment, it finally worked. And uh, that's what induction currents can do. Okay. And there. And uh, of course, uh, you don't want to put too much. Uh, you don't want to put too much power through the magnetic coils, or else the coils will catch on fire. Anyway, this is Dr. Jane's. Thanks for watching.